Can the planet's biggest tides be used to generate power? That's what they're exploring here on the shores of the Bay of Fundy's narrowest point. 14 billion metric tons of water, more than the combined flow of all the world's rivers, moves through this passage each day. In-stream tidal energy is essentially taking a wind turbine and putting it underwater in a high flow environment. In partnership with government and the local power company, a European firm is building a 15 meter wide turbine with plans to submerge it and get it spinning later this year. An earlier attempt to install such a device failed in 2009 when a smaller unit broke down hours after it was put in the water. This time is different, says the company. We've learned that we have to have local, very local details of the site and the site characteristics in terms of currents, in terms of turbine location. And this is really where uh, we have learned from this past experience. And this is why we are here today, back again in the Bay of Fundy. It's low tide and I'm standing quite literally on the bottom of the ocean. But every day, twice a day, the waters surge in here and turn this mudflat into a bay that can be 12 or more meters deep. North America's first tidal project is just across the bay. The Annapolis Royal Generating Station has been producing small amounts of power since 1984. The undersea turbines are on a much larger scale. Not everyone wants them to go ahead. Fishermen say that the spinning blades of the turbines will almost certainly disrupt or damage migrating fish that use the tidal flows to move in and out of the bay. It's only clean energy if you ignore the fundamental premise that these things kill fish, turbines kill fish. I mean, there's not a vacuum out there. There are fish living out there, traversing the area. Even though scientists whose research laid out the potential of the project say there's a long way to go before the sea bottom is covered with dozens of turbines powering Nova Scotia and its neighboring states and provinces. Well, there's a lot of challenges to it. The marine environment's very difficult to work in. Uh, the initial cost of the electricity that will generate it will be high. Um, and we also uh, have this question of what impact it will have on the environment. Balancing that impact against the costs of energy from fossil fuel will be crucial. Can tides so high they make rivers run backward help ease climate change? Or must they be left alone to ebb and flow as they've always done? Daniel Lack, Al Jazeera on Nova Scotia's Bay of Fundy.